أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وحبيب قلوب العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد Our dear viewers, welcome to another episode of The Master of Messengers. In our previous show, we mentioned that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, and his purified progeny and family, that he advocated the Muslims to write and to compile hadiths and traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and to gather them and to save them and to pass them down from generation to generation. Furthermore, we mentioned that there was an opposition and this opposition started at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and this opposition continued through the hands of Quraysh when they would summon those who gathered and compiled hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi to refrain from gathering the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi because he was not infallible and his words were not directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time used that as an excuse also, we mentioned that the opposition, the second part of the opposition started merely with the departure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi from this world. To be precise, this opposition, the second part of the opposition started when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was on his deathbed. And he had gathered the Muslims for him to give them his last words of advice. This day was known as the catastrophe of Thursday or Raziyat Yawm al Khamis or Raziyat al Khamis. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi gathered with all the Muslims or the majority of those who lived in the city of Medina in his home. And he told them that bring me a pen and a paper so I can write you a book and through this book you will never stray from the laws and guidelines of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at that moment a man stood from the crowd and the congregation Raising his voice in the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi Hasbuna kutabullah That all we need is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And he kept repeating these words And of course the congregation erupted Those who did not agree with this man and those who agreed with this man and their voices became loud and they started to yell at one another until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi told them to leave his home and this was done by Umar ibn al-Khattab <coughs> on the last days of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi so this campaign started at the time of the departure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Very crucial times for the Muslim ummah. Basically a time where the future of Islam was destroyed and hijacked by those who came with these words. Hasbuna Kitabullah. And this became a campaign against the tradition and the history and Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. That every time people would refer back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, 
the opposition would raise their slogan that we only need the Book of Allah, the Holy Quran. And we do not need the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, even though that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says that the Prophet of Islam and his messenger does not speak from himself unless it is through revelation. So the words, the true words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi did not ref differ from the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we mentioned previously in the last episode that Jibra'il alayhi salam would descend upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and he would teach him his sunnah and he would teach him his traditions. And an increasing amount or a great amount of uh, sources in some schools of thought within the Muslims that Umar ibn al-Khattab would command every single preacher from the Ansar and the Sahaba and the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi to minimize from the hadiths of our beloved, beloved Prophet and to only stick with the Quran. And for those who did continue to speak or to advocate the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, they were imprisoned, they were prosecuted. For example, Ubay ibn Ka'b or Abu, Abi Musa al-Ash'ari, they were both prosecuted and taken into court and custody for their crime was that they had mentioned hadiths from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. And one or several different references and sources that one day Umar ibn al-Khattab joined the Ansar who were leaving the city of Medina to the city of Kufa. And he walked with them to the end of the city or the outskirts of the city, the borderline of the city. And he told them that when you reach the city of Kufa, the people of Iraq will say that the companions of Muhammad have arrived to our city. So of course, without a doubt, they will come and ask you of the traditions and hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. And everything that you will say, they will nod their heads in acceptance. But what I ask from every single one of you is that you stop and minimize the spread of the traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and you only stick with the Qur'an. So this became a campaign, the campaign of Hasbuna Kitabullah. Moreover, this persecution grew to a larger scale and some of the companions of the Prophet, those who were very close to our beloved Prophet, were placed under house arrest. For example, like Al Zubair, he came to ask for permission to leave for Umrah. But Umar ibn al Khattab refused to let him leave for Umrah. For his excuse was that you will cause mischief in the Ummah of Rasulullah by spreading the hadiths of our own prophets. People like Al Zubair. Ibn Mas'ud, Abid Darda, Abi Dhar, Al Ghafari were placed under house arrest for they would refer back to the hadiths and traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. And of course, this opposition grew stronger. It grew stronger as days went by. 
as mentioned in the previous show, as soon as our beloved Prophet passed away, Abu Bakr got rid of the 500 hadiths that he had written from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. As if as soon as our Prophet departed his, this life in this world, his traditions, his hadiths also departed from the lives of these people. And they had no longer anything to do with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And they came with this new agenda, this agenda of Hasbuna Kitabullah. And when Umar was asked that, why such behavior? He had several responses. One of them was that, I fear that the Muslims will walk in the same footsteps of the nations that came before them. For example, the nation of Moses or the people of Moses, the Jews, or the people of Isa ibn Maryam alayhum salam the Christians, that they will take the books written by their scholars and they will neglect the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one of his words, he says, Mushnat ka mushnat ahl al-kitab, referring to the Gemara and the Mishnah of the Torah of Jews today. That these books were written from scholars and people neglected the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus, I will stand before the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and I will not allow them to spread within the Muslims so they do not become like the Mishnah and the Gemara of the Jews and the Talmud, the book of the Jews. Other words of Umar ibn al-Khattab, he says, the, Mus the actions of the Muslims remind me of the nations before us for they took for they took the books of their scholars and they left the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they abandoned the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no comparison when it comes to the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi la yantiqu anil hawa in huwa illa wahyun yuha. And if we continue to seek what happened at the time of his ruling, even people such as Abu Huraira, if you refer back to his biography, in the sources that we will share with you in the screen below, Abu Huraira says, at the ruling of Umar, anyone who mentioned the hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, or merely gave a hadith starting with qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he was persecuted and he was sentenced to jail. So Muslims stopped stopped bringing up the tradition and the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi merely years after the departure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Now mentioning the burning of hadiths that occurred after the death of Rasulullah or the departure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. In the book of Taqeem al-Ilm lil Khatib al-Baghdadi, the author of this book, Taqeed al-Ilm, uh, Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, the Baghdadi preacher, as a, a translation, in uh, volume 1, pages 38, Abu Huraira says that we gathered all the traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, by the command of Umar, from all around the Muslim world, 
Islam had spread throughout the whole Middle East, throughout Asia, at the departure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. As a ruler, he wrote a book commanding all those who had written or documented anything regarding Rasulullah, hadith, tradition, or history, for them to bring their books. For they wanted to make an encyclopedia or a very large amount of books and to document every single one of them. So instead of having thousands and thousands of books from several different people or hundreds or thousands of different people, we have one book that gathers all the hadiths of Rasulullah, his tradition, his sunnah, and his history. And he says the Muslims did do so. But when they gathered, when they gathered the books all in one place, they set them to fire. And the hadiths and the tradition and history, history of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, that was written by the companions, by the people of Medina, by those who had converted to Islam and the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were set to fire. And it was demolished. Brothers and sisters, our dear viewers, what I have just mentioned actually occurred within the Muslims. It is documented in our books. These are not the words of Mudaffar Qazwini. Everything that has been mentioned today on this show is documented as historical events in several different books, different sources, reliable sources to some schools of thought within the Muslims. Unfortunately, our time has come to an end, but we will continue the sweet talk of the tradition of the Master of Messengers. So follow me, Mudaffar Al-Qazwini, on our show, The Master of Messengers. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.